Healers, are they good? Are they bad? Which one should you invite in your Mythic Plus key? We're going to be looking at entering today in a close-up at the meta for healers in Mythic Plus, how good or bad the specs are in relation to the level of the keys that they're clearing. Of course, as always, take this with a grain of salt. We're looking at some of the best healers in the world. The way that they play the game is different than what everybody else plays the game. But what you should know first is that uh, with Restoration Shaman on our list, we're going to bump it really quick into A tier. And this is probably the healer that we can talk about the most. So Restoration Shaman, depending on who you ask, it's probably S tier. I would have put it into S tier if not for some particular thing. First of all, since we're going to go in and it's pointless to kind of say this about all of the healers, all of the healers, I think, or at the majority, are doing 32s. At least this week, Restoration Shaman is doing 32s. 32s are the biggest keys that are cleared as of recording this video. Like, by the time you watch it, I'm not sure if people are going to hop into 33s yet, although I would be surprised. And if so, they will probably not start with Restoration Shaman. But Resto Shaman is one of the specs that is actually playing at the same level as the top key being cleared. Now, why am I putting it into A tier? Well, that's because it's not always at the top of the meta when it comes to how its performance is. You can probably just look at Archon.gg, the new sub-creation, and see that they're consistently putting Restoration Shaman into A tier, which I don't know if I agree with, with it being always into A tier. However, it's actually playing at the similar to, if not the equal level of the top healers in the game. And if you look at some of the top players or the top keys in, done in the world, you definitely see Restoration Shaman in the top 20, top 30, which is all good. However, if we take a look at, let's say, a more nuanced approach at its performance, the probably worst, hardest key to be done is Throne of Tides. There are other difficult keys like Tyrannical Rise and Tyrannical Everbloom are all pretty bad when it comes to people clearing them. However, systematically, if you look at, let's say, the best healers in the world going on, of, well, I think we have an asset on from Raider.io. If you look at rank one healer and then just keep going down, everybody's like 32s, 31s. The first key that dips below the 30s is Throne of the Tide. So I would like to take that as information that Throne is the worst. And Restoration Shaman is actually doing really poorly at the worst key ever. So if you want to take a healer that will push the boundaries of the meta, you probably want it to not be worse than the majority when it comes to the hardest key. But that's the main reason why we're going to have Resto in A tier. And now we can finally move to Discipline Priest, the... Uh, underdog i think well maybe not as much of an underdog since it is an s year but it has had a rough uh, journey over the years dragonflight has been a little bit more generous towards the discipline priest and it is actually doing really well it is the priest spec to heal with if you're actually looking for a meta way to heal although holy is not that bad we're gonna get to that in a second there's not much to say about discipline uh discipline is the second or third best healer in the game in the sense that, you know, if you're not taking number one, which we'll get to eventually, uh, you're probably going to take a priest. Or if you want, if you don't have a shadow priest, then you probably want a disciplined priest. The mass dispel is really good. The PI is obviously really good. And of course, all of the tools that it has in dealing with the affixes, especially, in, you know, in those uh, incorporeal or afflicted, I don't know, whichever ones you use dominate mind on, Dude, oh my god, that matters so much more the higher in keys you go because, you know, debuffing your own enemies to take more damage definitely, definitely, definitely helps, especially in fortified keys, of course. Although, to be fair, I don't even know, does that even work on bosses when, you know, you dominate mine, the affix, and the affix cast the debuff on the enemies? Does that apply on bosses too? I know it definitely applies to, to ads, but either, either way... Discipline is a surprising contender for some of the best DPS out there as well, which starts to matter in the higher keys, although, you know, it's not like it was in previous uh, seasons or years where healers just, like, had to do damage because if healer had to do damage, Holy Paladin would suck. All right. 
there is a lot of um, there's a lot of negativity surrounding Holy Paladin, and I don't think it's a hundred percent unwarranted. Now, still, Holy Paladin is clearing, I think, thirty ones as of uh, as of this week. It's still, I mean, 30 ones, dude. It's like a key below, below S tier. But why is it in B tier? Well, kind of have to put a little bit of a distance between specs, depending on, you know, how they perform and how they rank against each other. Because we could probably put all of them into S tier if we're going to look at the overall spectrum of players, since all of the, all of the hitters, I, I believe they can do over plus 30 keys, period. Yes. I mean... If what is a marker of an S here, right? But that would be boring, as always. So we're gonna, you know, put a little bit of a difference. There's a little bit of a difference between uh, Holy Paladin and Resto Shaman. And it does have, and not even that, but against all other healers as well, I think we have also a breakdown of overall healer numbers when it comes to average numbers anyway. So take this with a grain of salt once again in terms of uh, the, their HPS or their DPS. And Holy Paladin is at the bottom in all accounts. And it's pro likely that like the only healer that has a really big dip when it comes to uh, to its DPS as opposed to everybody else. There's definitely a difference between, you know, specs like Holy Priest and uh, Preservation Evoker, but Holy Paladin just takes the cake with so little damage. Well, that wouldn't be that big of an issue if you had a lot of healing, but compared to like the top dogs, it's still pretty low on healing. So that's kind of where Holy Paladin is. That's probably why it's also in B tier. Not actually in B tier is Holy Priest, which is going to go up a tier next to Restoration Shaman. Now, I don't know. I don't think it's better than Resto Shaman, but I don't, I'm not 100% convinced. Because in if we look at the top players clearing keys right now, or not, sorry, the top healers clearing keys right now, you're definitely going to see Holy Shaman way before you end up seeing the first Holy Priest. Now, does that mean that Holy Priest is just significantly worse than Resto Shaman? Maybe. It could also mean that the Holy Priest has to contend with Discipline, and when Discipline is clearly better than both of these other ones, then if you're really pushing 32s and 31s, you're probably going to be Discipline unless you're just like that one-trick pony, Holy Priest forever, loyalty, healer, and we know those people, right? But that's fine. Holy Priest is obviously really good. I think it's the best healer in terms of overall damage potential, which is surprising because I thought that would go definitely to Resto Druid. This was a surprising fact. But even with all of that, Holy Priest is doing pretty well, uh, all things considered. It's been knocked down in, some, in terms of the priest healer spec to play by uh, by discipline especially this season i don't know how that's going to play out next season considering that all healers are going to get well i think all of them are getting different tier sets i'm not up to date with all of the tier sets that that priests get i believe discipline is getting the abrus one with the instant radiance or at least i would hope so because that was like fucking fire dude jesus mm, delish but as far as for Holy Priest, I wouldn't say. But it has had a lot of damage buffs uh, over the patches. And coming into 10 to 6, it has like a fat, fat patch notes from the devs. Like it's the hero with the most amount of changes. Even though the next one, which is Mistweaver, has received two new talents. And uh, not because of those, but because of its because it's actually really good. It's going into S tier. I think it's a little bit ahead of Discipline Priest. If we actually look at the top 10 healers in keys right now, that's like Resto Druids and Mistweavers, right? So you, for, for the same argument, you're probably going to see Mistweaver before Discipline Priest. And listen, I am so okay with this because how long has it been since Mistweaver has been a meta spec? It is a meta spec. The numbers that it's dishing out it are crazy. I think it it's, it's the king of raw HPS. It is at least, in, you know... If we just generalize all of the numbers that the healers can put out, Miss Weaver is definitely there in the highest potential HPS. And that was never really a surprise. I mean, the potential to like just burst heal everybody has always been a, a kind of like a Miss Weaver thing where it kind of lacked was essentially the cooldown department in helping the party out. But I believe, I mean, I would imagine I'm not super keen familiar with this. So I'm just, you know, gonna take it with a grain of salt. But I would imagine a, a, a part of why it's so good right now isn't necessarily because of its cooldowns, but also because of how its throughput work, because of 
I, man, listen, I've played all the all the healers in low keys, right? And I did notice that specs like Discipline have a lot of mana issues. Obviously, better players do that better than, than I do, but Mistweaver does not. Manatee is actually delish, and considering that Mistweaver has been a mana problem healer for a long time, this is really good to know, although I would be surprised if mana issues are what's holding people taking a healer into a meta dungeon, because that sounds... Something that you can just resolve with mana potions just slightly drinking in between pools. Sure, that eats up a little bit of time, but if everything else that the healer does is giga good, I have a hard time seeing that mana would be the only thing that would keep a healer from reaching higher peaks. But that is Mistweaver right now. Rejoice, monks everywhere, because it is a king right now. S tier, baby. Love to see it, love to see it. Let's see if we can see more Mistweavers in the future as well. Maybe not MDIs, but listen, they're pushing key, so that's what matters. Preservation Evoker has had a rough expansion. It is, now I don't know if it's worse than Holy Paladin, uh, probably, I think it's statistically the, the worst healer, at least this week it did, the highest key that it did, Jesus, English, was a 30, was the only, uh, the only healer that didn't do 31s and higher, um, that doesn't necessarily mean, I'm obviously, you know, it's still a plus 30, like, that's higher than 99% of us, and definitely you, but it is cranking, right, it did suffer a lot of nerfs, and it definitely suffers in the damage department, I love the fact that Preservation is getting the Season 1 tier set uh, next season because that did actually work into making Preservation a very meta healer, which was really cool. And that just shows kind of like the weaknesses that it has because of how Living Flame worked at the time. Um, it, you know, it's the, the tier set wasn't the only reason why Preservation was good in Season 1. But it definitely contributed a lot to its performance, having a lot of damage and having insta-Living Flames on a spec that... that functions so heavily upon uh, hard casting a lot of the abilities and part abilities as well so you kind of really like some instant spells to kind of synergize with your playstyle now i don't really see the playstyle changing very much for for preservation you're still probably going to be playing stasis uh next season as well as you do this season which is kind of how you're probably going to be healing i would love to live in a world where a meta playstyle for preservation to push keys would be with them or with um, Emerald Blossom, is it? I can't confuse the spells. Where you throw, you know, the big AOE ground effect seed thing that consumes essences. Uh, has to be Emerald Blossom, right? But that's probably not gonna be a thing from what I've understood from preservation that either overheals people or doesn't cover enough healing. So that's kind of like a weird, weird dichotomy. But preservation is unfortunately at the bottom of the list, but even so, I'm comfortably keeping it into B tier because it's still clearing pretty high keys. And probably to, to many people's uh, prediction, I guess I was, I was gonna say like not surprised, but uh, Risto Druid is actually the king. The king is back from the days of the past where it destroys dungeon content. Love to see it. It is one of my favorite healers to play in Mythic Plus. So obviously I'm pretty stoked that it's, uh, it's, uh, topping the, the charts. Restoration Druid is pretty strong. Cat form has been buffed and damage is obviously showing. It's not kicking, uh, Holy Priest's butt anyway, but... I think the Grove Tenders also play a role into being able to cat weave because you can just pop them up and you can just, just go into cat. But dude, I've seen people like uh, J.B play Restoration Druid and dude, what the f fuck? This spec can dish, man. This spec can dish. It is a Druid, of course. It does have a lot of good Druid things. Enrage or Soothes rather are really good. I'm always thinking of uh, Everbloom whenever you're playing Fortified. It doesn't even have to be Raging. But those Berserkers that just jump on a healer and always do at least one tick of the Whirlwind on you, they're always going to be enraged when they're low HP. And I imagine on 30s, that's definitely a one-shot if you're not prepared and if you don't like play every single charge. And obviously, Soothe helps a little bit. I would, I could probably see a bear form Resto Druid not insta-dying because of the... Um, because of the, the 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 leap whirlwind thing, although maybe uh, Resto Druids are not the one that they are going to be targeted by those. Be, even so, Soothe, I can see it being really good. The the D curse and the poison removal is obviously really good since those are some. Uh, this is why I believe that you know deserves a spot. Uh, those are some of the hardest hitting uh, debuffs this season, with Waker's Manor being uh, the, the the toxic uh, thing from the witches when you're outside that just like melts 
us and I would imagine 32 key pushers as well. That's just crazy. There's also poison in Dark Heart Thicket. Um, I, I believe there's some poison in uh, in Everbloom. I wouldn't be necessarily surprised, but Waker's Manor and Dark Heart Thicket are usually where that's particularly strongest. Not to mention that just being a druid helps with a lot of the dungeon design this season, since um, it helps to be very mobile. Although it's a meme, bear form is a really good way to soak things. Like I imagine on Morazan Rise, if you don't have like a mage or anything, um, you're probably good to do the orb mechanic. But listen, that's all, all good. This is how the meta looks. It's still pretty close. If you look at Warcraft Locks distribution of specs, they're actually very close with each other in terms of their overall performance. There's not a big discrepancy. I think probably the ones that hurt the most are actually Holy Paladin and Preservation Evoker. But this is just looking at how they perform in the meta you should probably just play uh, the fun one and uh, some of them and you know if you rank them based by fun they're different and we already have a tier list on that as well that you can check because at the end of the day just have fun man just have fun but likely Miss Weaver still has tier.